um, uh, contributions, I would say. It's a fantastic initiative to run this kind of uh, blog festival for a whole day. And to meet the nice people and to connect and to, um, to network. Um, I choose my title for my session on uh, how to build your professional network through blogging. Because I think that is really what blogging uh, is excellent for. And I use it a lot. And also so do my, uh, my fellows in, in my networks. And I will um, uh, discuss that a bit more, more with you. Uh, so thank you very much, uh, Dr. Nelly, for the kind uh, introduction. Uh, maybe I can add to my um, to my list that uh, last week I also became the Open Education Europa Fellow um, because I have been recognized for what I'm doing in the, the area of open education and my contribution to Open Education Europa. <coughs> um. So I'm involved, as uh, Dr. Nelly said, in um, very many of the international and the national organizations uh, around the uh, open education, OER, um, MOOCs, um, social networks. Uh, and I'm also a quality reviewer for, for, for example, EADTU, uh, both with uh, e-excellence for e-learning, but also for, for MOOCs with open up app. <clears throat> so those are just some of my affiliations. Uh, but recently, I have also started my own uh, company, uh, Ocean Nielsen Quality and Online Learning and Consultancy. And that is uh, pretty new for me. It's an interesting uh, field to be a uh, consultant. <clears throat> um, so what I would like to discuss or uh, to contribute with is about uh, why I care about blogging. Uh, about blogging yourself, but also how to follow bloggers and how YouTube blogging can build professional networks and how to keep it going. <laughs> um, you know, school has started, uh, started quite early in, in Sweden. We started around uh, mid-August. Uh, and there was a cartoon in one of the newspapers, <clears throat> the daily newspapers, and uh, that was about um, the teacher asking the, the children to, you know, what I think most of you have done uh, when you were in school, uh, to write about uh, experience, experiences from your summer holiday, uh, to write some kind of, you know, essay or something like that. And uh, this uh, child uh, in, in the cartoon, uh, uh, she said that, uh, oh, haven't you followed me on Twitter and on my blog for the summer? Why should I wrote, write this essay? <laughs> I think that is uh, quite funny uh, because, I mean, that is what some people are thinking, that um, everything is, they put on the Twitter account or on the blog or on Facebook is well known for everyone, so they don't have to tell it. But um, that is, of course, not the case. And um, even the quite uh, young children, they start with uh, those kind of social media uh, rather soon, rather uh, early. And I think one also can, of course, take the opportunity to uh, use it in, uh, in school. Um, for example, how, how was your summer? Write a blog about it. They can even maybe have that this kind of, some, some kind of task or think about, maybe not a task during the summer holiday, but maybe something to think about. <clears throat> Uh, this is my blog. I also put it in, in the chat. I have done um, two updates uh, for today uh, about uh, the spring, the fall blog festival, sorry. Uh, e for quality, innovation and learning. So the first question, I mean, this is, this is maybe not a question for you because uh, I'm sure that all of you are blogging and I have seen that uh, at least all of us who are presenters in this uh, Ford Blog Festival, we have also an own blog, and that was uh, my last uh, post about to acknowledge uh, the blogs people are writing and, and give the links for that. <laughs> but uh, do you need a blog? Um, yes. Yes, you do. 
Yes, one do. Uh, it is not uh, something that should be seen as uh, adding to what you are already doing or some uh, add another task uh, to your uh, your list uh, to do or on your to do list. Uh, but on the contrary, uh, if you are really working uh, continuously and uh, conscious uh, with your blog, uh, you can uh, really earn a lot and you can really make your life easier and you can really uh, make your network much easier. And of course, then you, you, in the beginning, you have to, to step out of your comfort zone, but uh, it, is, uh, it is worth it. I know many of my colleagues who are rather uh, famous writing books, writing in um, journals, you know. They have stopped to do that because they reach out for the messages uh, much easier, much faster when they are blogging about it. Or if they are um, maybe still writing books, which they, they still do, of course. For example, my colleague and friend, Goyne Conal from the UK, <coughs> uh, her latest book, uh, was written uh, like a blog post. So she put up all the chapters like a blog post, and she got a lot of contribution. And she even asked for con contributions. What should I write about? What is the status, uh, the current state of the status of art in this kind of field about this uh, chapter? So it was really a collaborative work, and I think that is an excellent uh, idea to, to work on it. And I also know several others, for example. Um, uh, Martin Weller and, uh, um, and also Steve Wheelers is doing like, like this. Uh, some of those who really are, I think, uh, I know that they are word, word fam worldwide famous, but they are from Europe. And <clears throat> I used to, to work with them quite a lot. So it is worth, worth it. So I uh, decided to, to start. That is so far. That is a great uh, a great starter. Uh, but where do you start? What topics uh, shall you write about? Where are you going to get the ideas from? Uh, there is a saying that is said so that blogging is the new poetry of our time. So instead of maybe writing poetry, you write a blog. And as we heard from, uh, from these previous speakers today, blogging can be about more or less everything uh, as long as you have a passion about it, because that will uh, is the uh, idea about it and the theme about it. So how can blogging help you to grow your professional network? Because that is my, my uh, topic of the uh, for today. Uh, first of all, you can engage your existing networks, your contacts, but you can also reach a totally new audience, uh, the friends, the colleagues of your previous network, and uh, they can refer to, if you write a blog, for example, um, they are reading it, and then, then they can refer to it, and they are sharing it with their networks. So to your, maybe from the beginning, your small own network, there are a lot of spin-off effects to other networks and gain other networks and to all those kind of connections with the, with the network network you got can reach a totally new audience and reach people which you haven't been aware of at all from the beginning um, neither people made neither from people from other continents other countries other areas suddenly someone is uh, writing uh, reading your, your blog and you got new contacts uh, for example, with you, you needs you, you wrote my blog today, and you you, you post a message about it, and um, that was very kind of you. Thanks a lot for that. So now suddenly I know know you a bit more. And what is very important, if people are contacting you like, like you did, is also to reply to them. If you have noticed that they have uh, read your blog and that they have uh, taken it into account. Uh, so first of all, I will um, uh, talk about the six networking strategies, how blogging can help us accomplish each, each of them. 
so first of all, uh, be helpful. Uh, and that mean, well, that I mean that um, when people in your network get stronger, you even got stronger. And when you get stronger, also your network gets stronger. So share your experiences, your ID, and share information. Uh, promote your network's work. Promote what they are doing. Um, a small example again, uh, my second blog uh, for this uh, four blog festival, I wrote all the presenters, uh, the topics for today, today, and I also gave, gave links to their blogs. People who are reading my blog, they see all of you, and they can go back to your blogs. Uh, as a blogger, uh, you can be some kind of a connector, some kind of meddler to other people, to other networks. Uh, second, uh, build a reputation. Uh, well, that means that when you build a reputation, you build also in trust that people know you, that people know what you're talking about. Uh, then they, they know they know you, that they know that you have uh, done research about the area, that you have knowledge in the area, that you have contacts in the area you're writing about. It's very much about uh, uh, trustworthiness. And then also, if you have a reputation, uh, people are more more motivated to uh, to look for your blog and to follow your blog. Uh, be visible. Um, be sure to maintain regular and consistent with people you you want to stay in touch with and communicate with them uh, to even maybe other media than, than blogger blogging via email, with social networking, uh, but also in, in person. Uh, so be sure to be visible, both online but also in physical, in person. Because people who know you who you are, then they trust you much more. And then they would like to follow you. Then they would like to uh, connect with you and to hear and to value what you have to say. Be sure to meet uh, a lot of people, both people you know, but also go outside from your comfort zone, for example, to your network. So go outside, and uh, also uh, be sure to make um, to manufacture serendipity. Uh, go to conferences, go to uh, events, go to meet meetups. Um, but of course, also use uh, social media in different ways. So people become to know you. And um, I would strongly recommend, uh, I mean, that is uh, obvious for all of us who are dealing with the game with blogging, that you must have a photo. People don't communicate with X. You know, it is just a white bubble. And those people you don't know about. People communicate with people, and then they would like to see how they communi communicate with. Uh, be intentional. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, go where people uh, people are. If you, for, for example, follow yourself uh, and uh, people uh, in your network about topics you are interested in. Uh, look, where are they going? Where are they hanging? Either social or, or physical places or to social media. Try to connect with them. Try to be there. Uh, interact with people and build a, uh, a reputation. Now think about who do you would like to, to meet and who do you like to follow. And try to, to reach those people. Try to connect with them. And also, maybe if you're reading their blogs, for example, if they are reading, for example, my colleague Bernie Connell, who, who I uh, both contribute um, a lot with and, and collaborate with, and she's also one of my friends. Uh, when I ha have written her blogs, I always refer to what she is saying about it. 
so, so she could also get uh, uh, acknowledged about it. And of course, I am following who she is following. I uh, think also in long term. And with that, I mean, um, relationship takes time. You keep a good relation with people, <clears throat> with your network. It takes time. It takes time to build. It takes time to um, to keep going. And it takes time to be a long-lasting relationship. So stay in touch with people you like. Oh, yeah. oh, uh, so uh, I think in, in long term, uh, it can also be good to be sometimes be, be rejected, because of course uh, not uh, everything you are thinking or saying in your blogs are things what people are liking. But uh, on the other hand, there can be discussions about it. And also, you learn a lot yourself if people are uh, questioning what you are thinking or what you are saying. But in case you are getting rejected, you have to be, of course, polite. <clears throat> uh, then another thing is that um, listening is one of the most valuable and yet commonly overlooked skills to have in networking and in business. Sometimes it's more important to listen than to talk yourself. Uh, listening will help you to get to learn about people's challenges and to get to know them better. And you can ask open-ended questions instead of giving the answers all the time yourself. You need to be generously uh, interested and express interest and curiosity. And that is also what you can do in your own blog. You don't have to write everything yourself. Because you don't have the truth about the, whatever topic it is. You can raise questions in your blog. You can ask people what they are thinking about the topics you are interested in. Then there can be a discussion about it. And then <clears throat> the ninth point, bullet point is about asking. You never know until you have asked. The more often you ask, the more you learn. You can ask people what they would like to uh, read about, what they would like to, to follow what you are doing. And maybe the most important thing is to follow up. You need to build a reputation and you need to build uh, to follow up uh, people who have uh, asked you questions, who have commented on your blog, uh, to have recognized your blog, uh, acknowledged your blog. Uh, so, it, you, so it does not just are being out there and uh, there is no, uh, no one taking care about it. You as a blogger have to take care about your blog. And if you do so, so uh, you will be recognized and acknowledged. Uh, because the purpose of professional networking is to gain information, increase your visibility in your field, and to establish personal connections that will help you advance in your career. And blogging is very much how you build your own career as well. Um, then I would like to discuss uh, six core networking strategies on how blogging can help us accomplish each of them. First of all, of course, you need to offer a value. But maybe first of all, you need to, to find uh, what yourself are passionate about. <clears throat> and then uh, the second, or maybe the first one, <laughs> uh, it's one of the core principles that you need to offer some kind of value. What can you contribute with? 
either in, form, in the form of knowledge or in form of question things or having new ideas on, on already known things or whatever it is. Uh, what you also can do is, of course, is, uh, if you're interested in a topic, you can summarize research in a topic and blog about that. There may be pros and cons uh, in some kind of research, and you can blog about that. You don't need to yourself have all the answers to what you're writing about. Uh, again, uh, to build your own reputation. Because people like professional relationships, and they would like to can uh, collaborate with people, not with the company as, as, as such. It is with people uh, the collaboration takes place. And as a blogger, you need to display your own expertise. Uh, you need, of course, to be authentic. You need to have an authentic voice. Yeah, because your character shines a very easy too. And with that you can provide a great supplement for people to get to know you better and to build rapport. You can tell stories, you can share your opinions, and you can show your character to help people to get to you know you better. And that in turn will build uh, your own reputation. You need to cast a wider net. Uh, with that, uh, I will say that, um, again, as we discussed about earlier on, that networking or networking together, and you don't exactly know the audience you have, because maybe you're writing for your th what you're thinking, maybe you're the closest uh, audience, but then you never know if people are sharing your blogs, if they are um, citing your blogs, if they are... Um, taking pieces from your blog, etc., etc. And it's also when you have a wet, maybe you think about yourself when, when you have wet people's blog, and then you meet them, then you maybe get a totally different kind of um, view of that person. That is also why it is so important to be authentic. So people can recognize you both in your blogging but also in, in real life. And a, a very, um, a very e easy uh, thing to, to think about is to increase your visibility. Um, simply write someone, some awesome content that people enjoy and, and get some value from. And then, of course, you have to promote your network. And then that you can do, of course, with different kind of uh, uh, social media. You can do it like this uh, for blog festival to contribute in this or other events uh, online. This is an excellent uh, uh, venue to, to collaborate and to, to keep in touch with people. Uh, you need to stay in touch. <coughs> uh, to share your blog post, uh, you can uh, do that with uh, social media, as I said, with LinkedIn, uh, Facebook. Um, on the most, uh, at the most uh, blogging templates, there are these kind of share buttons. Uh, be sure to do that, because that is a very, very nice way how you can stay in touch and where people can find you. And also, for example, when if you are in LinkedIn, if people see that you have written a new blog post, then you get some kind of update. People get some up, uh, update from you. And that is a very, very valuable way how you can stay in touch with people. And then, of course, uh, you have to promote your network, yes. Uh, for example, if um, there has been a great, a large news of any kind, for example, I don't know in your countries, but uh, I think that the results from the OECD report about the 
skills and about computers and skills uh, have been around in the most countries uh, news uh, the last week. Um, in uh, in an overview, it says said that um, uh, uh, pupils in skills don't learn better with technology um, than with um, the, the traditional form. And uh, of course, that is not a, the two as such. Uh, the, the, the two is more that teachers who are uh, involved with technology and let the, the people and pupils uh, learn with technology, of course, uh, that promote uh, some kind of better learning. So it's a very complex situation. But although um, there has been a lot of blogs around this topic the, the last week, from, of course, different kind of perspective, because people think uh, different uh, in this area. But that is one, uh, one example. If something is happening, a lot about it. See what others are thinking. Refer to what others are thinking. Maybe you can expose different kind of perspectives uh, on, for example, this OECD report or something that you are passionate about. So some takeaways: writing content that um, content that that's valuable to your audience and displays your ex expertise uh, is an effective way to build a professional network. Of course, if you can manage to do that, people will trust you, you will build your own reputation, people will follow you, people will count on you. And blogging is a great way to stay in touch, to update and to build rapport with your network. And this is what I like to say. They have an excellent uh, page about blogging. Uh, I myself and so or many of my colleagues in my network, they quite often uh, get, for example, invitations to be keynote. Uh, to write um, uh, book chapters, uh, books, uh, to contribute to journal articles, etc., etc., because they are visible on their blog, and people are counting on them. Um. So some blogging tips. Um, I'm sure most of you are blogging yourself, so I'm sure you, you know this already, but um, maybe I think it's, uh, it's worth to think about it, to, to really think, think about it, to increase your uh, reputation, to increase your value, to increase your uh, network, uh, uh, to increase uh, your trustworthiness, uh, etc. First of all, um, you never stop learning. So that's the reason why you need to write, uh, read other blogs. Uh, that's also one reason why you need or must uh, write yourself. Because every word you write will teach you something. And every word you uh, read will also teach you something. So you will learn as you go about writing, about specific topics, about the internet, and about yourself. Uh, be genuine. Uh, let your voice uh, permeate your post, so people know who you are, and what you think, and what you stand for. And also write the way you talk. If people know who you are, already to your blog, then they know you when you meet. And they can nearly hear you are hear you are saying or hear you are reading your own blog uh, when you when you meet in a physical place. <clears throat> you have to discover your voice. And to that to that you of course need to write and write and write because that is the only way you learn. And of course, recognize uh, the topics which you enjoy writing about. If it is about recipes, if it is about uh, education, if it's about MOOCs or whatever it is. Uh, be interesting. Uh, be um, unpredictable. So people don't uh, immediately uh, know what you're going to say. Oh, no, it's about writing this blog again. 
She's always saying like that and that and that. <laughs> Be unpredictable. Uh, surprise your reader sometimes. Surprise yourself, not at least. Uh, make yourself laugh. Make others laugh. And again, as I said earlier, uh, you can blog even if you don't have the answers of things. You can make uh, raise the questions. Maybe you are the one who raised the, the really hard and difficult questions, which others maybe can blog further on. Um, maybe you can allow yourself to, to think of the more predictable ideas first, but then you can um, try to be more, uh, dig more deeper into them and to make more unique ideas about it. Be original. Try to think outside the box or try to think in no box at all. Shoot it from another angel. Even if uh, there are blogs about uh, one topic uh, and everyone is blogging about that, try to take another angel about it. Because there's always few sides of a coin. Maybe even more. <laughs> if you can't uh, think of something new to say, then at least uh, find a new way to say it. And that you can do, uh, for example, to refer to other bloggers who have written about the same uh, theme as you are. And in that way, you also, of course, acknowledge uh, other um, bloggers or blogging and uh, their uh, knowledge and uh, maybe research. You make also more uh, credibility if you refer to others. It can also be, for example, from authorities, from the government, from newspaper, whatever it is. Uh, it makes you more trustworthy if you provide evidence. And make connections to hot topics. Uh, for example, this OECD report, which I, uh, I mentioned, that was really a hot topic last week, uh, all over the places. And everyone was uh, talking about it. It was in TV, it was in blogging, it was in social media, all over the places. Um, you can write about current ev uh, events and how you relate to them. In this way, um, Uh, you can show that you have an opinion, that you care about it, uh, that you don't live, uh, live under a rock, uh, that you care about something. And that can also bring your uh, audience to, to your blog site uh, for the future, if you have something to say about it. Um, Write consistently. Um, maybe you don't really need to, to have a, some kind of special schedule or something, but it is good to, to write what you regular so people uh, know that you are having opinions about things. And that is also always, a, 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 as I said, a good way to be, be visible. For example, uh, during summer, I myself haven't blogged uh, that much, and um, from the beginning I thought I should, but I didn't. Um, but um, and, and sometimes I, I feel that uh, there was something we were missing, both on my, my side, but also people were asking, you haven't blogged for a long time, was, uh, was something wrong, was there something happened, especially? Uh, it can be maybe good to do it uh, weekly or if that is too often, maybe every 14 days or something. But some kind of uh, regularity I will uh, recommend. Uh, not, at, not at least for yourself because then you keep going. <clears throat> uh, something else is that you need to read constantly because you need to read what others are blogging about. But you also, of course, need to, to read what, uh, what is happening around you in your, in your field. Uh, but also, 
you must read so you can have something to write about. But not all your ideas which you are blogging about are just, you know, coming from your head like that. <laughs> and it can, could be, be wise to, um, although if you haven't uh, been blogging, uh, have the time to, to, to blog for some reason. Uh, that was what I did in summer. I, I put a lot of, you know, interesting topics uh, if I should find the time to, to do it uh, during the summer break. And uh, actually still I have some of those uh, topics on my list. Because some topics are maybe more, you know, hot of the stuff, like the OECD report. Some are more, I mean, it can, can come now, it could, could have come in July, it can also come in November, whatever. Uh, but I have a, used to have a list. These are things I would like to write about. But to blog, uh, you need to read, to read constantly, to discover new, uh, new topics, of course, new ways how to express things in your own blog. Um, you need to create a catchy headline, but on the other hand, that headline will not be misleading. So people should know in one or another way what will come in the text. But it's always, you know, it is like um, like newspapers. You read the headlines, and then uh, if it, they are nice enough, uh, you continue. It's the same kind with blogs. It is uh, good to have links in the blogs because uh, or many, th many things. Um, first of all, um, uh, you are more trustworthy if you have uh, links to, in your blog because then people can um, get the evidence. And then, then they can also read more if they are really interested in what your, your topic was about. And then, of course, you also save time. So you don't have to... Uh, cite or refer to everything in another article or another blog post. You can just get the headings and then you can put the link. In, but doing so is also a way of recognizing uh, other bloggers. So they can read the original message in the colleague of yours, for example, from that blog. But you can highlight what your colleague was saying. Uh, it is um, nice to have uh, images and videos because that makes uh, it easier for people to, you know, catch uh, what it is about. Uh, pure text is very boring. You can just go to yourself. If you have some kind of image, image you can recognize that and you can get a feeling what it is about. You may also mind the length of your blog post. Some say maybe 300 words or something. I mean, it shouldn't be that long. Maybe it's better than to, to have it... Uh, in, in, in smaller posts, because it is rather boring to read too long posts and to you know to scroll down, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That's also why it's good to have uh, uh, images and videos. It's also used to say that uh, don't hesitate to take risks to explore new ideas. Uh, to come up with some kind of innovation which are not explored uh, uh, earlier on. Because remember, uh, blogging is not about to explore what we already know. Blogging is very much about to explore ideas from different kinds of angles and to take new opportunities, etc. Uh, then, of course, you have to be aware of your own limits as well. You cannot force anything. Uh, but on the, on, on the other hand, uh, you will learn so much more if you will go outside your comfort zone. So take it in your time. Uh, you may also use appropriate tags, so uh, blog posts is easy to follow. And that is, uh, of course, not at least for yourself, so you can follow what you have been written about, uh, but also for people who are following you, who are, who are looking for a special topic, for example, about MOOCs. What are the latest uh, blogging posts about MOOCs? If you have a tag in your blog, that will be fine. Otherwise, it will not be fine. So again, um, blogging is uh, very much to be visible. <coughs> and uh, also, um, afterwards, you can go back to what is, has been written. So use tags and use appropriate tags. You should not be uh, too um, too ashamed to, to 
promote yourself? You can share your, your work in different kind of media. You can share other bloggers' posts and they might return to your favor. If you are sharing their blogs, maybe they are sharing yours. Um, you have to edit your posts. They may be very well written. I mean, well written, but no spelling mistakes, uh, uh, no um, tense uh, mistakes, this kind of thing. That is rather annoying. Uh, then, of course, uh, uh, the tension between quality and quantity. It is said that uh, sometimes it's better to maybe have a, uh, uh, not a finalized or, or ready uh, blog post uh, published than it would be before. Um, but that can be, make people feel uh, some kind of, you know, thinking. For example, if you write, as I mentioned before, if you're writing uh, like a Gwena Canal, uh, her book, there are maybe some unfinished thoughts. And then, but then she can explain that, I haven't thought so much about this yet, but um, what do you think about that and that? Or do you have any input, etc.? Everything doesn't need to be really ready from the, from the very beginning, as long as you um, also allow the reader to know that it's not uh, ready from the beginning. Maybe some posts can be better if you get some kind of uh, impact uh, on the ideas from your readers, from your audience. Um, please pay no attention to trolls. And please stay in contact with other bloggers. I think I mentioned that uh, several times by now because I think that is really important and that is also how you grow as a blogger yourself and how you grow your network. Um, sometimes it's said it can be nice to have a, you know, a list so that this blog will be about that and that, some kind of heading. Uh, but sometimes people are just reading the headings and then they don't read it more about it. So, of course, it's, again, it's about uh, you are you. <sighs> Uh, the most important is that you have a passion about what you're blogging about. It can be about lifestyle, it can be, be about fashion, entertainment, uh, MOOCs, uh, OER, education. But passion is the most important. It can also be nice to, of course, follow other blogs, because then you can see the style and the tune, the tone in, in uh, different kind of topics. You can learn a lot from that. So to get started and to, to continue, that is maybe the most important. Um, again, focus on your passion. Uh, it can be an idea to, uh, as I mentioned before, as I did it for some, I created some kind of stockpile of ideas, what I have. Uh, now I will, will uh, continue to, to write about that. Uh, you maybe have to plan a bit uh, how often you will blog and how often you will be connected. Uh, connected. Um, it can be nice to have some kind of schedule. It can be also nice for people who are following you to know that you are in some way uh, posting a regular So they don't need to, uh, to look at it and to search for it on, uh, you know, <laughs> Google, etc. But they know that you are you're coming once a month or whatever it is. Um, I will take the opportunity uh, to, take, to show this uh, slide, uh, although it's not just about the blogging, but it is about open education, and um, I'm sure that all of us who are taking part in this four uh, blog festival uh, are interested in open up education and open education and what that can make, what kind of difference that can make. I'm not sure if all of you know this. Um, uh, portal, Open Education in Europa. Uh, by the way, that was uh, those who awarded me this uh, fellow last week. But it is a really, really nice uh, portal, and they will celebrate their second um, uh, annual um, anniversary next week. And there is a lot of things happening. Uh, 
first of all, this portal is about how to find resources, how to share resources, and how to go in that. Uh, they produce e-learning papers, uh, e-learning in a wider meaning. Um, they have newsletters. Uh, you can contribute to this uh, uh, portal yourself with interesting uh, topics. Uh, they, it's here you can find uh, all kind of information about uh, uh, conferences, about um, resources, etc., etc. Uh, and if you're not familiar with it, uh, I would strongly recommend you to, sub uh, to subscribe for the newsletters. It is supported by the European uh, Commission. Uh, during the last couple of years, and we have learned a lot about it. Uh, I wish uh, I will say we will really have learned a lot about it, and I will say that um, it has uh, made some difference uh, to the communication and to professional networking since people started to blog. But I will also say um, that we have a sunrise which we don't know that much about. And I am sure, uh, really, I really am sure that blogging will take us a lot of steps further on in our professional network and in our communication around the world with opening up education. Um, sorry, we can't see really the the heading for this slide. But it says, um, what's the point of uh, education if Google uh, bloggers can tell us anything? I will say that many young people today, and also the most of us, we are looking for bloggers when we would like to, to know something. And then, of course, we're looking for Googles, and uh, everything is in, um, in the mobile or some kind of mobile device in the pocket, so everything has, uh, that, that is also that uh, we who are bloggers, uh, it must be visible on some kind of device. <clears throat> um, so uh, I think we are all on our way to being awesome bloggers. The most thing is to find our passion, to find our wit, and to share our most epic stories. So uh, making uh, meeting the the sun sunrise is that the bloggers blog. So I think I will uh, end here. And I think we maybe have some time for some uh, uh, discussion or questions. No, thank you, Nelly. Yeah, we need to follow the, the chat here.